It's called a turducken. Just one of the handmade, homemade specialties. Transplanted New Yorker Mark Rebhan and his son Matt are cranking out. Need some fries down? At the restaurant and butcher shop, first opened by Mark's dad 32 years ago. Well, basically, I mean, you have a, a chicken, a duck, and a turkey. So what I'm going to do me. is I'm going to take this chicken and cut it right down the back. I call this a scissor cut here. You want to get your knife tip in here. This is the oyster meat of the chicken, best part. Right now, the duck. Same way. I like this. All right. This is kind of like culinary Disneyland for a dude like me. All right. Big turkey. If I'm down far enough, this is going to pull right out. Stock pot. That was money, dude. Yeah. Okay, can I try this one? Sure, absolutely. Be my guess. I feel a good finger cutting coming in. <laughs> and you're just gonna kind of go down, pull the meat. There it is. Good job. <laughs> We're gonna take the duck and the chicken. I'm gonna hit it with a little Cajun seasoning. Throw the duck down. Same with the chicken. Chicken goes on a little. The, the this is the super hot side. A little less hot. Right. Right. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, put some of them blackening seasonings on there. Virgin olive oil here. Get it into the seams, the pockets where you took the thigh bones out. A little blackening on this guy. I'm gonna take some of this cornbread stuff in here. Now you're gonna go to your spinach stuffing here, and you're gonna put some andouille sausage. And you guys make the andouille sausage also? Right here on premises. Some roasted red bell peppers. Oh, that looks good. Now now you're gonna take your duck inside this turkey. You're not doing as much now. It's kind of hiding him in there now. Yeah. Now we're going to go to the chicken. I bet you have a lot of friends come Thanksgiving <laughs> and Christmas time. You're just going to take it, and you're going to bring it up and turn it like this. Sometimes it's best to have a friend help you hold it. I grab it. Let me see if I can find somebody. <laughs> When is your uh, spring clothing line coming out? Because you're really doing a Mac job. Dude, you make that look so easy. That might be one of the best looking uncooked food items I've ever. I mean, it's just beautiful. You just want to kind of set it up in here. Now, how long does Superbird take? This Superbird here is going to take uh, about 12 to 13 hours at 200 wait, 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 degrees. Wait, wait, wait. How many? 12 to 13 hours. Hot. One, two, two, three. three. All right. I feel better. I say, <laughs> hey, you do. I'm going to cut it right down the middle. Steam coming off that. Oh, you should smell that. Holy moly. How's that look for you? Oh, man. It's a good combination. Definitely the richness of the duck and the fat. And then, you know what I pick up in there is the andouille. Mm -hmm. And the chicken has such a lighter texture mm -hmm. than turkey. Yeah. That is a flavor fest right there. So I'm here in Marathon, Florida, down in the Keys. I'm out here finding the joints for you. You're going to dig this. Herbie's Bar and Chatterhouse. Tuna tacos for you, hidden gem all day long. It's one of those mom and pop places. And the mom and pop here are Shirley and Peter Damaris, who became empty nesters, moved to Peter's hometown, and bought this marathon key landmark that first opened in 1945. We have the chicken smashed potato. The chicken of the smash is excellent. So it's two whole chicken breasts fried, the baked potato that he smashes, and then it's topped with this awesome white gravy. I love it. So let's talk about this chicken smash chicken. Chicken and smash. We're going to make the brine. OK. Water. Brown sugar. Thirst for salt. Orange concentrate. Orange concentrate. OK, I like it. Lemon juice. Ginger. Got it. A sea salt blend. Red chili flake, little granulated garlic, yada, yada, yada. Yep. Rosemary, fresh thyme, fresh sage. Simmer for 15, 20 minutes. And how long is this going to brine? Overnight. What's our next step? Making a buffalo sauce. Regular old buffalo sauce isn't good enough? Nope. Hot sauce, the reaper sauce. It's oh. also another style of wing sauce. White pepper, chili, cumin, ginger, mustard, cayenne, turmeric. There you go with that concentrated orange juice again. And the butter. OK, so standard wing sauce just completely freaked out by you to the next level. Pretty much. Good talk. We have our buttermilk and the buffalo sauce that we just made. So this goes in brines for another day. Yep. Next up. Caramelized onion cream sauce, clarified butter, salad oil, Onions, sea salt blend, 
white pepper, garlic. And deglaze a little white wine. Cream, a little bit of cream cheese, and let that reduce. And we've got to make the chicken flour. Got it. AP flour, basil, oregano, cumin, thyme, ginger. Guess what? Garlic. White pepper. White pepper. Oh, how did I miss that? He teed it up. Rub sage. Chili powder. Mustard, cumin, coriander, parsley, paprika. Are we missing salt there? Or... Thank you. So now the chicken comes out of that to high gluten flour into an egg wash, into this, and then we go to the fire. And all we do is just take a regular baked potato, smash it, throw it in there when the chicken's cooking. That's it. Top them with the green beans. Our chicken, onion cream sauce. Scallions on top. Bon appetit. And that chicken is layered with flavor. And it soaks up that brine, so it's super juicy. And the caramelized onion anti-speedo gravy is the piece de resistance. I mean, that's what ties this whole thing together. But you got briny, salty, herby, a little bit of spice in it, crunchy chicken served on a luxurious potato. This is a stick to your ribs kind of a meal. And it's really done with real culinary process. Well done. I like it. So I'm here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I got this buddy, and he says, next time you come into town, hey, man, check this out. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Anyhow, he says, next time you come into town, you got to find a great seafood restaurant because I'm a, uh, what are you again? I'm a vegetarian. It means he only eats vegetables and seafood. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Vanilla Ice. Dude, what are you, stuck in the 90s? I'm always stuck in the 90s. The best decade ever, man. This is Pirate Republic. Hello, Snapper going in. They have amazing food here. Everything's always so fresh. Matapa, order up. There's a lot of Brazilian influence, and there's a lot of influence from all around the world. That global flavor was picked up by Brazilian-born owners Roberto and Claudia Garrios during their many high seas adventures. We spend yeah. most of our life on the Caribbean and a pirate ship. You have a real pirate ship? Oh, yeah. Arg. That is cool. So you summoned your like inner pirate energy and applied it here? Yeah. And where did the recipes come from? Around the Caribbean, Venezuela, Brazil. Here's your seafood macaca. Seafood macaca is one of my favorites. It's a Brazilian-style seafood stew. It's got clams, and it's got calamari, and it's got mussels and shrimp. Just really, really nice presentation. What's the dish we're going to make? The moqueca. And what is a moqueca? The seafood stew. OK. Here is our golden corvina. Are you good at flying fish? No. When you are from Florida, to graduate like kindergarten, you had to be able to fillet a fish. That's probably the last time I did it. Here he goes. <laughs> Look at her boning out the fish, and you were not a chef before all of this happened. Mm -mm. You just learned the hard way. Yeah. Skin it and chop it. Great. What else is going to be in this? We're going to make the pepper sauce that I used in the moqueca. OK. Those are mild. Bikinho pepper. Body pepper, that would be goat. That's a goat pepper? <laughs> goat pepper. You really got a problem if it's a ghost pepper. What's that one? Dedo de mozo would translate to lady fingers. That's it's a little spicy. Good to that one. You like spice? Uh-huh. I love spice. And this is the malagueta, which is also known as piri piri. Very nice. A little touch of salt, a little touch of pepper, in goes olive oil. Hit it up. You have to try that. Ooh, that's real good. Now we're getting into building the base of the sauce. Correct. This is blended oil, garlic, a little onion, bay leaf, salt, Pepper, our housemate pepper sauce. That's as much as you put in? That's like a two tablespoons. About. You made all yep. that for that little? Oh, we've used it a lot in other dishes, too. Oh. Okay. Bell peppers, yeah, bell peppers great. Go in. You guys cook at home a lot? It's a challenge when you start to do the veg cooking, because you got so many different flavors and spices you can throw around. It's all about how you prepare it. Pureed tomatoes? Yes. And this will cook down for how much longer, Chef? About half an hour. Got it. All right, Chef, let's get into this. The moqueca sauce you just made, corvina, shrimp, Clams, salt, pepper. This is dende oil from a palm tree. OK. And it's traditionally used in this dish. And coconut milk. Then we cover the pan. I feel terrible, too. We've got to make Rob one. You're going to make it one for me? I guess we could share. He'll get one bite ahead. and one bite only. Then we add calamari and mussels. As soon as they pop, we're ready to we're rock. Ready to go. Look at that. There's a lot of seafood in this. It smells delish. Let's see what we got here, brother. Mmm, not dynamite. Everything is cooked right, not overcooked. I love the kick. <laughs> that is really good. Tastes a little Creole almost. It's spicy, it's tangy. The kicker to the whole thing is the coconut milk. That's what gives it that luxurious, that creamy, that silkiness. It's fantastic. Now, this is where the friendship's gonna kind of get into a different realm. Pull it back over here. No, let's just bring it right back over here. Wait a minute. <laughs> 
seafood more catka. I love the good variety of seafoods in it. It's beautiful, it's colorful, and it makes you want to eat it. The texture of the calamari is exceptional. Nice and tender. Yes. I'm tasting like a creamy, like a curry kind of thing. But you like it? Oh, you know, yeah, it's wonderful. Is every seafood restaurant like this in Florida? Is everybody on the water, or is this special? It's definitely special. You get the nice air off the water. You can come in the boat and just dock right in front of the restaurant and have a great time. Yeah, <laughs> that's my favorite. We gotta check out Sonny's famous steak hoagies. How many rolls do you make a day? Between 30 and 50 dozen. 30 or 50 dozen, oh, okay. We start with the water. This is fresh yeast, heated up in some water. This is the big shot way right here. Then I have salt, I have dye malt. Who? Dye malt is the food for the yeast, the flour. 11 and a half pounds to start okay. with. We're gonna mix it for a little while, and then we'll add some butter and shortening. Another 12 pounds of flour. Got it? It's not your first rodeo, is it there, John? No. The dough starts being carried by the hook. It's ready to go. Now we take it out, and where does it go? It goes into a dough box. For how long? About an hour. Then we punch it down, and then it starts to come up again. This is one that we punch, fold, 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 put it back. Right. Oh, you should feel how warm it is. What size are we going for? Four and a half ounces. Boy, you're good. That is dead on. I say that's perfect. Thank you. I'm out. That was perfect. We'll put them on our metal pan. We're going to put them in the metal proof box. You're going to get about another 20 minutes, That's 10 it. minutes. And then we're going to roll them out. We'll press it down with our fingers. We want to fold it little up, turn it over, roll it out. That's good. Then I put these in the metal proof box. And they go round three. Yes. Next thing we'll do is score them, butter them, and pop them in the oven. Yes. Take it. The wonderful rotisserie. Slide her down. Push it all the way down to the bottom, and then it'll stop. Round and round it goes. Ah, it must be the ones I rolled. Interesting how it gets like a little crackle to it. Yep. Mm. Plate crust, but light. That's a good one. Makes the whole sandwich. Like the one folks have been lining up for since 1958. Cheese steak. Cheese steak. This is the second. Don't get any better. And what we have here is boneless ribeye, just a little bit frozen. And you're going to just pop it in the sleeve. We're looking for like a sixteenth of an inch. You've got that so thin, there's only one side to it. <laughs> Goes on the line, yellow onions. I'm going to put a little bit of butter on the side. Always better with butter. And then cover it. We're just waiting for it to get to a point where we can break it up. Put a little salt on top, a little butter again. Mix it all together. And now I'm ready to put my provolone cheese. And that's all she wrote? That's all she wrote. Mm. Whoa. Thank you, thank you. Mm. A little bit of melted cheese, thin slice on that meat and the onions on a freshly baked roll. You know what the kicker on that is? The butter. The butter is what does that. This is Krakatoa. Were you a cook in Bali? No. You just cooked the food that yeah. you know how to cook. Yes. Yeah. Some more, it's coming. Today I had the s'more dogen, and it was fantastic. It's a beef dish with a lot of different flavors and vegetables. Combine it with the rice, it's a really nice bite. We're going to make red seasoning, or bumbu mera, chili de arbo, guajillo. I know that one really well. Galanga. Ginger, candle nut, shallot, garlic, lemongrass, nutmeg, cumin. A lot of cumin in Bali food? Yeah. Coriander. This is very important. Turmeric. Yes. Cameron paste? Yes. Lime leaf. Lime leaf. Water. Shake, shake. Salt. A little bit of oil. Gonna cook it off? Yes, with oil and water. Next step, chef. We gonna make sambal. Everybody knows sambal. This is your sambal. Yes. Red chili, we call it chabe rawit. Small, but it's... How was that again? Right there. Right like, there. Why did you go to Texas all of a sudden? <laughs> Lemongrass. More of the lime leaf. Oil, and of course, water. <laughs> Smooth. Cook it again. 20, 30 minutes, yeah. Now it's time to build the dish. Add a coconut oil. Cardamom, clove. Star anise. Cinnamon, simmer this until you got the back. fragrance, yeah. Thin slice sirloin. The red seasoning. Boom, boom, mera. Exactly. Making sure you didn't forget. Chicken base. Oh, so much smell. Coconut milk, red pepper, onion. Lime leaf. Let me guess, lemongrass. Yeah. And Indonesian sweet soy sauce. We call this ketchup. That's Indonesian ketchup? Let them simmer. Everybody cook right down in there. I think we are good. Very Thai-esque. So much lemongrass and the coconut milk. Love the fresh veggies in there. The spice is great. Rustic, flavorful. It's not every bite is the same. It's kind of like listening to a song, and all of a sudden you get a lot of bass, and you get a lot of drum, and you get a lot of treble. I'm in treble right now because that sambal is hot. We have the s'more for you. It's juicy, and you get to taste every nuance of the clove, the star anise, the cinnamon. It's just so good. 